This is the A.M. Stevenson adding machine, made maybe in the 19-teens. It's made of nickel-plated brass, and it's in very good condition for its age. It has two spinning wheels with holes punched in them that you're supposed to turn with a pencil. It has labeled numbers next to the holes and some other numbers peeking out through these windows to show the answer. It's also very small. This device was created by Archibald M. Stevenson, pictured here to the right of his beard. At age 29 in 1873, Archie got a patent for a four-wheeled adding machine with an automatic carrying mechanism. This would have been one of the very first auto-carrying adding machines made in America, though it had been done over 200 years earlier by Pascal. Stevenson's original prototype is owned by the Smithsonian Museum, although their official photograph of it is upside down. Come on, guys. The big wheel is supposed to be on the left. Anyway, each spinning wheel has a bar attached to it, which just spins right along with it. And each wheel has pegs on it, which the bar will knock into. So when one wheel makes a full rotation, the bar comes over and hits the pins on the next wheel and turns it by one position. I imagine this would have been a bit confusing to use since every other wheel rotates in opposite directions. And this bars and pins arrangement was probably pretty fragile. It's not exactly something you could just throw in your pocket. But that thing was just a prototype anyway, and it turns out Archibald never mass produced that version of his machine. The one he actually made is this thing. It says A.M. Stevenson, Mufford Joliet, Illinois. It's small. It's about as big as Ukrainian Elsa. And it's totally different from the prototype. Somebody must have set Archie down and had a frank discussion about the budgetary and manufacturing realities of his original design. Bro, I know you wanted four wheels, but hear me out. That's stupid and way too complicated. You gotta do two wheels. And Archibald said, two wheels is stupid and way too simple. Let's do it. It's only got two wheels, but the design is much better than that other thing. An engineer and collector named Bob Oatness actually took pictures of this thing with an x-ray machine to see the insides, and it's a brilliantly simple mechanism. This is a real x-ray photo of the thing, and this is a fake animation of how it works. You know, the wheels on the bus go round and round, and each time the wheel on the right goes all the way around, it pushes the other wheel by one click. The two wheels still spin in opposite directions, but it's not really a big deal here because you're only meant to spin the one on the right. The left one clicks for each carry, but you're not supposed to spin it yourself. And the click comes from this little ratchet thing right here. Actually, the x-ray explains some strange things about the design. Like, there's only a ratchet on the left wheel, and that's why only the left wheel clicks into positions. See, the right one just moves however you like. And the angled teeth also mean that the left wheel can't turn backwards while the right one can. This also means you can't uncarry like if you were trying to do subtraction since the wheel on the left can never turn backwards. The x-ray also explains one very cute little design quirk. See this little bump? It's flat on that side but why you got the little bump over here? You can actually see this in the x-ray. That one tooth on the wheel sticks out just a bit too much when it spins all the way around. So they had to make that little bump out. It's all beginning to make sense to me. I really like the action on this thing and it's super portable. But to be honest, I'm not really sure how useful it is with only two wheels. This thing was marketed as a column adder, which means it's meant to help you add together a big column of single digits. You know, something like this. Okay, here we go. I grab the eight and dial it in, then the six, the seven, you get the idea. And the answer is the number you see in the two windows there, 38. It ain't wrong, but do we really need a machine for that? I mean, I'm not really great with numbers, but I can pretty well add up single digits in my head. The wheel on the left is the tens digit, and it can wind all the way up to 19. So this thing can handle numbers up to 199, and then it just goes back to zero. There's no auto clearing mechanism. You just wind everything back to zero yourself. All right. To me, it's a bit of a novelty, but for the time period, I think this would have been impressive to a lot of folks. It's super small, which everybody likes. To me, not as good as the Adiator, but the automatic carry really gives it that kind of whiz-bang factor. And the thing seems to have been successful enough, although I'm not sure how Archibald ended up doing. 
The design got ripped off and sold in one form or another from the 1870s into the 1920s. One outfit in Pittsburgh called it the Vest Pocket Adding Machine, and this was apparently unrelated to the VPO ad, which came out around the same time. I made a video about the VPO ad a while back, and I called it the stupidest name ever for an adding machine. But I was at that time unaware of one of the Stevenson knockoffs, the Tell O Flash. What? I mean, VPO ad sounds stupid, but at least I know what it's supposed to mean. But the Tell O Flash? Tell O Flash? This little brochure for the Tell O Flash is a real gem. The name is terrible, but then they have a great slogan. Costs less than one mistake. Weighs only one ounce. I like that, but they should have put it the other way around. And then they got testimonials, you know, like letters from people about how much they love the Tell O Flash. Just look at these glowing reviews. Adder came safely. It is all right. Thanks. Well, to be honest, that's the same level of low-grade enthusiasm that I have for the Stevenson adding machine. Archibald Stevenson, you designed this thing 150 years ago. Your adder came safely. It is all right. Thanks. Thanks.